Hey, let's uh, start uh, video number two on uh, professional light metering tips on how to understand the uh, lumosphere on uh, any uh, decent uh, light meter, which is a half moon sphere. Now, let's first talk about incidence reflected skin really quickly. Let's go over the major points and then let's talk about the dynamic range, what I can do, and the latitude that I have with my camera. And this is why I said it's important to know A, you only need to know two points, not three. The dynamic range of your camera, for example, like this camera behind here, Nikon D500, I have 7.2 stops of dynamic range where I've lost all my speculars on one end and I've lost all my detail in the shadows on another. The second point I need to know is above 18% reflectance or middle gray, where do I lose my highlights? Highlights are blown. And above 18% gray, I've metered this, I've checked it, and I have 2.7 stops before my highlights are blown. Technically, I've got like 2.9, but I actually sent two tenths of a stop latitude so that I don't actually brush up against that edge. So what two points you need to know, the dynamic range of your camera, also the uh, number of stops um, above midtone that you have as far as latitude before you lose your speculars. Now if I'm going to meter for my highlights, and a general rule with any camera, it depends on which camera it is, that I actually take a meter reading of my speculars for my highlights. Let's say it's a person's face right here. Okay, turn it to second and a four. Now I can open up uh, uh, three stops, not, well, two and a half, three stops from that without losing uh, uh, my speculars, my highlights, and still be able to bring up my shadow detail. But maybe that's not what I want. What if, for example, I want to have a silhouette lighting? Okay, I'm at two hundredth of a second at a four sixteen hundred ISO. I don't want anything over here. I don't want, you can tweak a lot of stuff in your raw files in Lightroom, but what if I want to do as little of that as possible, which, of course, if you're being paid to do a shoot, there's nobody paying you between getting the shot right directly out of camera with a little bit of tweaking and sitting there and spraying and praying and bracketing and messing around with an enormous amount. Nobody is paying you to screw around in Lightroom in your underwear at night in front of your damn computer. Okay, your client is going to pay you the same whether you spent 30 minutes in front of Lightroom or whether you spent three hours in front of Lightroom. Yeah, time is money. Time is money. And there goes my tell. My girl goes my cell phone. <laughs> Someone always calls me at the absolute worst time. So, what sort of latitude do I have? Where can I actually move things? Meter for my highlights. I can open up two, uh, two and a half stops, 2.7 stops. Be able to capture and also do some selective exposure in Lightroom to get my shadow detail, to capture the full dynamic range of my camera. But what if I don't want that? What if I want to lose my information over here? On my shadow, I have a silhouette lighting. Okay, 200th of a second at f4. What I'm going to do is I'm going to raise it a stop above that, and I'm going to lose the information in my shadow. I'm going to have high-key lighting. Excuse me, not high-key lighting, but I'm going to have a silhouette lighting for the shot that I want, if that is what I want. So. You need to know what your midpoint is, where you're going to lose your speculars in relationship to the shadow, and what it is you're exposing for. Your camera has no idea what it is you're exposing for. Your camera has only a reflectance meter in it. Your camera radically discriminates. Your camera's racist, by the way. I say that jokingly because your camera sees this is one thing and this is another thing. Your light meter does not discriminate between this and this. If I take a meter reading here, with the black or the white, the incident meter reading takes absolutely no account to that at all. None. Zip, zilch, zero. Your light meter in your camera only sees reflectance. The incident dome on these light meters only sees incidence. The light meter, the handheld light meter, is blind to reflectance. It is blind to the specular. It is blind to emissions. Your incident meter sees only the light, never the subjects, the people, the things. already said that, right? Okay. What is you want to expose for? Where do you need to hold your hand? And you need to know the dynamic range, where you want to shift that point relative to the exposure that you want so that you're able to get the maximum dynamic range out of your camera if you want, or if you only want to expose for the highlights or how much dynamic range you want in the shot. One of the really great things, there's a thousand things, it would take like 30 videos to show you all the things I could do with this meter, maybe I'll do that. But here, I'm going to take a reading, 200 to 4. As I told you before in the prior video, it's a lot of people, I actually took, took a look on YouTube, and there's not one single really good video on how the hell to use a light meter, where to hold this dome. Because I say, well, point it back at your camera. Well, look at this. 200 to the second, let me do constant metering. 
160, 125, 100, 180. I mean, 180, 180th of a second, excuse me. I've had too much caffeine. Well, it's pointing back at the camera that I've got uh, over three stops of difference between this, 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 and this. Blocking the light. Also, you need to look at that dome like a moon. Also, you want to block the specular. If you have the sun coming in at the dome, well, this is the one time you do want to block the specular to get a correct reading. If you have the sun coming down here, and there's a little white spot, super bright spot on the dome right here, I'll take a reading, and I'll block that out. So I'm actually taking a true incidence reading, but I'm blocking out the brightest part of that specular that will affect and alter the reading that I'm taking. So, let's do a couple things here. 200 to the 4, I'm going to hit the memory button. Okay. The other thing, too, is there's a huge difference between taking an incident meter reading here, it's pointed directly back to the camera, and here, here, and here. As I showed you in the prior video, there's a stop and a half, depending on how bright the light is, in single source light, especially if you're using a, a, a single studio strobe with a grid. Radical difference between taking a, a, a studio uh, flash meter reading here and here. Even just sunlight, here and here. Well, it's pointed back at the camera. I'm in the shadows. Yes, but this will read as one thing, and this will read as another. One thing, another thing, one thing. You're metering for this. You're not metering for your meter. So holding it out here does you no good. You need to meter it right here. So I'm going to meter it right here. Okay. I'm going to hit the memory button again. I'm going to hit the delta EV average. And for me to capture the dynamic range between my specular and my shadow, my meter has told me I'm at one thirtieth of a second, which is the difference between uh, what was it, one fifth and uh, two hundredth. Two is two hundredth over here. I'm at your pri aperture priority to four sixteen hundred ISO. Let me clear out my memory. Yeah, the last one was a fifth of a second. So I had a fifth of a second here, and then I had uh, a two hundredth of a second over there. That's if I want to capture the detail over here, but not below my speculars. My meter will actually tell me, it will start blinking down here along the dynamic range that's programmed in for this meter of my camera, one of three different cameras, whether I've actually reached the limit of blowing my speculars if I choose the average between the speculars and my shadows. Not my midtones, which should be right here, but my shadows. Once again, you need to know what it is you're metering for. What are you metering for? Am I metering only for my speculars? I'm going to expose for that, and that's the way I want my print to come out my image to come out. If I want to capture the full dynamic range, I'm going to take several readings. I'm going to choose the average that best suits uh, the image that I want to come out so I don't have to screw with it as much in Lightroom without blowing my speculars because speculars, blown highlights, is a faux pas. There's a few times, compositionally, where it's certainly perfectly fine to blow the highlights on your image. There's not a lot of them, but there's certainly some, and some of those images are very beautiful. They generally don't work in portraiture. <laughs> I saw someone using a light meter in a video that pointed it out to me last week and uh, the guy uh, takes a, a shadow reading uh, let me point out to you a really stupid mistake a person he's got a person uh, standing behind a building and she's completely in the shadow he takes a meter reading okay she comes up perfectly exposed and then what he does he sticks her in front of that building or another building actually and then of course now we have speculars and shadows on her face. The sun's coming down here. What he does, and this is exactly what he does, he actually takes a shadow reading here, and he goes, and there is more light, obviously. There's stuff reflecting up on this side of her face before her, her whole body and face was in the shadow. And he's like, oh, it's just like a little bit more than it was before when she was completely in the shadow. And then he actually takes a shot off of that. And, of course, her forehead is just like blown to hell. I mean, it's just, wah, it's gone. The mistake made, and this is a really key thing, so when you point out people's mistakes, it's not to attack them, it's to learn something. When you point out mistakes, this is good. It is a teaching, a training tool. If we don't learn from mistakes, well, you just can't attack it. You, know, you, just, you shouldn't point out someone's mistakes. Well, why the hell not? Pointing out mistakes is a really, really good teaching tool. Has been for thousands of years. Except now we've got a nation of pusses that thinks you shouldn't ever point out a mistake. Well, that's a mistake. Ah, oh, you're attacking them. You're just a troll. Well, shut the hell up. A mistake corrected is a teaching tool. I tell people like this, you're an idiot. You know, people that say stuff like that, it's like, I don't even want to know you. You're a moron. You know, you can actually point out a mistake without attacking somebody. So let's actually talk about this again really quickly, and let's see if you can catch the mistake. You got a person 
this is actually the scene. She's actually, let's pretend uh, that, uh, you know, this is the main light, which it is. It's coming from this direction. He takes a meter reading of her standing back here behind the building. Obviously, it's all the same. Her whole body and face is the same because she's in the shade. The exposure comes out correct. 18% gray exposure. Takes an incident meter reading. Okay. Now, the next one, the sun's coming in from in here. She's standing right here. You've got the white building reflecting back on her face. There goes my damn phone again. Phone never rings unless I'm making a damn video. You got the light bouncing back from the building under a face. You got light bouncing in from the gravel right here. The sun's beating down. What he does is uh, he takes a, uh, a, a incident meter reading of her face. Let's just assume now instead of where she's standing, this is her face. He takes an incident meter. He's like, well, it's just a little bit more. And he exposes for that. The highlights on her face are just blown to hell. If that's what you want, that's a good thing. But generally speaking, you know, that's not what was indicated that this person wanted. See, the difference is, is while the shadows are only a little bit more compared to the prior scene that he took, the, uh, the speculars, the dynamic range, this is what people don't get. It's like, well, I'm going to take a meter reading of the shadows. You know, I'm going to expose for the shadows. Well, that's good. But what you forgot is that this side of her face is in bright sunlight. It is, wah, it's a lot more light. So the dynamic range now between this side of her face, meow and meow, okay, is is gone from here to whoa here. So <laughs> if you take only an incident meter reading of this side of someone's face and not over here on the specular, and then average the two, so you can determine that you've not gone over your clipping point and you have made a mistake, as the Russians would say, Bolshoya ashibka, big ass mistake, okay. So let's uh, go over the tips once again because I, I'm, I've verified that I'm the only schmuck on, on YouTube that has gone over this point. Where the hell you hold your hand? Incredibly important. Okay, I'm pointing back directly at the camera. Boom, 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 boom. Three stops difference here. Okay? You need to look at this lumosphere the same way you look at the phases of the moon. The amount of incident light that is falling on it. I have a main light here, but what if I have fill light or I have some gravel over here, a white building pouring in at the periphery? Where I place that is incredibly important. I'll actually see someone metering someone's face. They'll just come up here, they'll stick it underneath their chin, it's like, bam. It's like, there we go. That's it. It's like, no, that is not it. What were you trying to meter for? I was trying to take an instant meter reading of their, sh of their face in the shadows. I was like, well, it's not here, buddy. It is here. Because this is 1 one hundredth, and this is 125. Let me do a better example. I'll see people do this where you got in the face. We'll take a meter reading way the hell out here at 1 60th. Okay, it's 1 60. It's like, no, you didn't meter this spot on her face because over here on the face it says 1 20th. Let's just hold it down 60th, okay, 40, 20, 13, 6, fifth of a second, fourth of a second. Where the hell you hold? You have to, the key point that people. That, when they got a model too, like I don't want to touch the model. That's fine. Don't touch the model, obviously. But you got to get this from here to meow. You still don't have to touch their face. You know, it's a light meter. It's not your hand, for God's sakes. Okay, <laughs> you don't have to touch their. You're touching it with a light meter, not your hand. You know, not something creepy. Just get it on the face. You're taking a direct incident reading of the light hya and not hya, because the light hya is not the same as the light hya. Radically different. Let me, I wasn't actually holding it down. Here we go. 10th, 25, 50, 60, 25, 50. Pete, I see people do this all the time. Huge mistake. So, gotta get it close. It doesn't have to be pointed directly back at the camera. That's not important. The important thing is, is that the light you're measuring is exact because this is the same difference as this. Same reading. It doesn't have to be pointed directly back at the camera. Generally speaking, it's a wise idea. You have to know the light that is falling on the lumosphere at the direct spot you're metering it for. Another thing, dropping this down. This is the same thing as, how much time do I have? The same thing as on this older meter, which is still made, by the way. Removing that and sticking this on here. People will tell you, and it's incorrect, even the company will tell you that this is for like measuring, which is true, but it's still incorrect. That it's only you know for measuring direct incidents like copy, you know, painting, 
you know, something like that. You're only measuring direct incident. This is exactly like using a, uh, a spot meter, except for incidents. It's basically 45 uh, degree uh, incident meter reading, but it's still kind of spot, so to say. Let's just call it spot. Well, a 45 degree spot certainly isn't spot. No, but 45 degrees of that is definitely far more than, uh, far, far more uh, defined as a spot than this 180 degree. Let's say 45 degrees, 180 degrees, because this dome will capture light coming in here. It will drop into the meter. Yeah, it does a U-turn. No, it literally does pour in and affect the meter. I absolutely guarantee you. You can prove that to yourself. It not only measures this, but over here. If I'm only measuring for this, but I have also incidence or fill light or fill flash coming in here, not that this meter can meter for flash, then that's going to change the outcome of what you're metered for. This is like, well, I'll see people complaining about a meter not working. I did the meter reading, and the meter is broken. It doesn't work. It's like, oh, how are you holding it? Where were you holding it? Where did you have the dome positioned? <laughs> 45 degrees, flat, flat-chested. Dolly Parton, flat chest. Uh, Kira, <laughs> there we go. Kira Knightley, Dolly Parton. Kira Knightley, Dolly Parton. You, you see the difference? This is uh, kind of capturing eyes from everywhere, and this is kind of like not capturing any eyes. <laughs> no. <laughs> you see goofy stuff like that is when people remember stuff. So, and that, putting this flat disc on, is exactly the same thing as lowering this dome and making it recessed. Because while this is not a disc, but is now completely recessed, it acts like a disc. So instead of, if I take a meter reading here now, let me hold it in the exact same spot, okay? Yeah, I'm just going to bring the light on for you. Hold on a second, there we go. Thirtieth of a second at f4. Now let me raise it. Hundredth of a second at f4. Oh, did you see that? That was in the same spot. Let's do that again. Hundredth of a second at f4. 180 degree measurement. 40th of a second at f4. Hmm, okay. I'm only measuring direct incidence at 45 degree, a little bit less than 45, directly entering in here. If you, these are the complete and full direct tips of how to use this little damn dome on the top of your meter, because they're all little domes like this, 180 degree domes. Okay, and you think, well, I'm holding it out here. It's only the measuring the light. Well, yeah, I've only got one light source in this video. Most times, unless it's in a studio or something, you've got more than one light source. This dome will catch light from everywhere at 180 degrees, because that's what the hell it is. It's a 180 degree dome. Ah! If you don't remember that, then you're stupid. It's easy. 180 degrees. And also think of this as a lunar phase. You can even look at it and imagine the moon. You can see. I can see the phase there. It's half and half. Here I can actually see it's waxing. I can see it waning. Easy way to think about it. Works just like the moon looks as it's going through its phases. So, where to hold your hand? Okay? Because if I bring this dome up here, I need a constant metering here. I go from 200, 160, 125. Where the hell to hold your hand? I see people do that all the time, too. Big mistake. Big mistake. Okay? Block the specular. If you got a canyon a thousand yards away and you want to take an incident meter reading, you can't just stick it out there in the sunlight and go, ah, that's an incident. No, 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 no. You have to block out the specular. Hold your hand out here. There'll be a little bright spot of the sun. Reflect on it. You block that out. Boom. Then take your reading. Okay? Generally speaking, you don't want to do that. But that is a valid thing to do. If you want to take an incident meter reading of something you can't touch way the hell far away. Okay? Blocking the light. Where to place it. Looking at the dome like phases of the moon. Incidence and reflectance. Also, like I said, let me mention this again. You need to know what sort of dynamic range you have above a midtone on your camera, above the midtone, before you start clipping. 2.7 stops on my camera. Also, what the total dynamic range your camera is. You have to know those two points. If you don't, find out. You can look it up. They're listed somewhere. Okay, bye.